uh, first, uh, how do we get evangelicals to stop fearing the boogeyman of Marxism in politics <laughs> slash society and recover social justice as a Christian call, not a political tool? Man, what kind of a question is that? Who would ask that kind of a question, Kyle? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe uh, me? What? You asked that question? Yep, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that and the answer that was given. Welcome to Wokipedia. Wokipedia is brought to you by Enemies Within the Church. And you can find out more at enemieswithinthechurch.com. Once again, that's enemieswithinthechurch.com. And there you can find all kinds of resources, uh, including Wokipedia. But we would encourage you that if you have not ordered your copy of either the DVD, Blu-ray, or, you know, if you're one of those newfangled persons, you can go ahead and click on the download button right there uh, or, or the streaming button. I'm a boomer at heart, so I might not exactly know what's going on there, but you should go ahead and you should check that out at enemieswithinthechurch.com. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing great. I'm doing exceptionally great because I've been sitting on this clip for a while and it's fun to actually get to use it in an episode finally, uh, but you know, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to continue the How the Woke Manipulate series. I'm excited because we don't have to do the work this week. So, Sam, how are you doing? And are you excited to uh, not have to do the heavy lifting in one episode? Yeah, I, I'm excited for this. I mean, um, uh, it, it's always great when the the people that you're you're exposing are kind of coming out and they just do the work for you. I mean, you know, there's sometimes mm -hmm. where you really have to work to kind of show hey, this person's coming from this philosophy, from this theology, and you're playing a connect the dots kind of a game. Um, and it's sometimes difficult, even if it's right there, just because of you know the sake of time. But that's not going to be the case today. We're, we're going to see that David French <laughs> is just going to come out and he's going to help us uh, by explaining how the woke manipulate. And it is by shifting terms. It is by shifting mm -hmm. terms. Oh, and yeah. I, and I think this, th this was just great too, that you, you gave them this question because first of all, I can't believe that this would be asked in a panel or, or not a panel, but like a discussion question. <laughs> I, I, yeah, like, they, uh, it, it's just surprising how much they, they ate up the question and they were, they were ready to go for it. Uh, right. Now we're just going to talk about David French's response um, Michael Ware also responded to it, although his answer was he said a lot of words and said very little in that time. Uh, but French, French gave us, he was really ready to discuss this and give us a principle that we can latch on to. Unfortunately, it's a principle of how you manipulate people and specifically how you manipulate them, their dumb conservative people into becoming educated woke people. Yeah. And, you, you know, French is starting to become extremely notorious, I would say, uh, specifically in on Twitter and in, um, well, his articles, I guess he writes uh, for The New York Times, if I remember right. And or, or is that his wife? No, no, they no, both do. Right. No, they both he, do. Yep. He started writing for The New York Times, uh, I think, two or three months ago. And, um, you, you know, lo looking at that, he's really becoming notorious as as being one of the most, I don't know, liberal voices of evangelicalism. I think he's probably supplanted Russell Moore at this point, at least I mean, in the SBC. Well, I'd say in scale, in, in name recognition scale, because yes. obviously Russell yeah. Moore, he's producing content at, well, he's doing more than just producing. He's overseeing content for Christianity Today. So he's right. got a huge reach there. Now, David French, I'm pretty sure that more people read New York Times than they do Christianity Today. 
it's got a large reach. I'm not sure that's kind of a that's kind of a, a, up in the air and not in a good way because people generally peg both those things as liberal entities these days but yep no that probably more people do read new york times no david french is extremely influential right now mm -hmm. uh he, he's kind of taken up the mantle he's sort of the i don't want to say next generation because that implies age but you had the for the past three four five years you had certain woke figures that sort of dominated now, a lot of right. them have faded into less prominent positions, but David French mm -hmm. is kind of like the late rising star of wokeness. Right. It, it, well, it, and it's because he does have some kind of a, um, a, not a, not what you would say conservative background. I'm not saying that he was conservative, but he has certain uh, accolades that would, you would maybe mm -hmm. naturally put with conservatism. Like I'm an Iraqi war veteran. Well, that doesn't mean that you're conservative, but it, it is one of those things where if you're starting to think of an Iraqi war veteran, you generally don't think of a Democrat. That's that's kind of the the, the reality of it. But we see that French is not conservative, um, to say no. the least. No. But maybe we should just let French talk, huh? Well, let's uh, so let, let's set or, or this we up need for to people. Set the st set the stage a little bit. Yeah, let, let's define what he's going to then tell us, um, just so you can see it while you listen to the clip. We want you guys to be able to identify it while he's saying it, but it's going to be pretty darn obvious. So, you know, we're talking about the idea of shifting terms. And, you know, what do we mean by that? It's the idea of altering your language uh, without altering your meaning. So right. it's using different terms to say the same thing. And it's Which is very manipulative. Oh, yeah, it's exactly. It's for the purpose uh, I, of manipulation. Because uh, yeah. you're trying to bypass someone's defenses. You're trying to, you know, go, hey, they're going to reject this. But if I say it this way, I can introduce the concepts to them, hopefully get them to buy into them. You, you know, it's instead of finding common ground, instead, it's taking your ground and stamping common ground on it and telling them <laughs> that look we're actually in the middle that's that's really what it is that is a brilliant way to put it and i think you'll see that as we listen to david french so let's go ahead and listen to what french has to say uh first uh how do we get evangelicals to stop fearing the boogeyman of marxism in politics <laughs> slash society and recover social justice as a Christian call, not a political tool. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. I think that one of the things that is important in this. So number one, let's just acknowledge that there is absolutely no way to navigate, for, a, for example, race issues without somebody getting supremely ticked off. So <laughs> the measure of your success is not did everyone agree with me? So. <laughs> Some people are going to get supremely ticked off, even if you just raise it. I mean, where yeah. I am in, in Middle Tennessee, there are people who are trying to ban from our early elementary curriculum the book Ruby Bridges Goes to School. Okay. They're trying to, and one of the offensive, another one about Dr. King goes to Washington. The uh, Norman Rockwell painting of uh, Ruby Bridges desegregating schools in New Orleans. So, that is, that is not a position where you're going to say, well, in order to accommodate somebody who's upset at a, at a historically accurate depiction of desegregation, I'm going to remain quiet. That, no, 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 no. <laughs> However, at the same time, there is also a, we should go out of our way to try to use language and concepts that are not explicitly tribal, uh, jargony, and often um, highly political, okay? So there are different ways of describing things. Um, so in, in more left-leaning circles, uh, you might say systemic injustice or systemic racism, and people will know what you mean, and it's not going to be super controversial. You might go into another um, audience, and they, the word systemic racism might immediately mean that they don't, or the phrase systemic racism might immediately mean they tune you out completely. 
And so hmm, I still want to communicate with folks and I still want to reach their hearts on this. So one of the ways that I try to do it, I say, there was 345 years of racism followed, I mean, of, of slavery followed by Jim Crow, which is um, legally enforced discrimination violently defended for 345 years. You do not eliminate all of the effects of that in 57 years of contentious change after the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Do you agree? And if somebody says yes to that, now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. If somebody says no, that of course you eliminate the effects of 345 years in 57 years of contentious change, well, you got to back up some steps there. But if they're going to agree that you don't eliminate those consequences in those 57 years, you got something to work with. And then the other thing is don't go for everything <laughs> when you can go for one thing or two things. And this is one of the things that is just so much a part of our online discourse, which is if you're not my 100%, my, if you're only my 80% friend, you, that you're turned, in, turned into a 100% enemy. So, you know, in a race issue, you could talk about, oh yeah, we absolutely need, um, we need qualified immunity reform. We need a ban on no-knock raids. We need this. We need greater fund funding for inner city schools. And then you say, and then they say, and we need to get rid of gifted and talented programs. You go, whoa, whoa, whoa. well, then all of a sudden you're a bad person. No, no, dive into the areas of agreement, dive into those. And, and I think that because one of the things that ends up happening, ironically enough, is that if we don't, if you treat somebody as a pariah when they don't agree on everything, nothing happens. Nothing happens except you feel awesome about yourself and terrible about the other person. So find the point of agreement, dive into the point of agreement, and also understand that there are some folks for whom even bringing up the topic is too much, but that doesn't mean because your goal isn't universal consensus. That doesn't mean that you don't bring up the topic. You just, you have to bring it up. You yes. have to, but there are ways in, in which you can do it that I think can build consensus rather than divide. Right. Well, Kyle, I, I, I mean, I, is there any more that we need to say? I mean, th nope. there you have uh, it. Start the music right now. We're, we're, doing the outro uh we're all done <laughs> episode over uh, no uh -huh. we should probably we should probably actually talk about it uh but we sam before we we dive into responding to things that french said to yeah. try and hopefully bring out some more clarity um to the, the the principle the tactic that we're talking about um is there wisdom in avoiding certain terms at times and if so, how is that not manipulation as well? Yeah, th there are times when there is wisdom um, to not use certain terms. Um, so the one, the, the one that comes to my mind immediately is when you're on Facebook or other kinds of social media, there are certain ways to make a point or to say something that will not get you banned. And then there are certain ways to make a point and to say something that, that would get you banned. Now you're not changing your term in order to be more uh, manipulative, to move the other person, but rather you're choosing a term that will allow you to communicate the same truth, but not have a particularly negative consequence. Um, mm -hmm. or a different negative consequence because a lot of times you still get a woke mob who comes after your your social media page, which yeah. is a, a negative consequence, but you're yeah. still able to then go and respond, which is much better than having a woke mob come after your page and you not being able to respond. Um, and I the, the, the key difference in my mind, and correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, but the key difference in my mind is – the goal is to communicate the same truth. It's not to bring the person along with an incremental I, uh, ideology, but rather it's to go and to state the truth, the same yeah. truth in a more palatable way, either to Zuckerberg or to the person you're communicating with. Well, yeah, it's about clear. The big difference is clarity and intent. Are you right. still being just as clear and is your intent for the person to understand your position. Exactly. Versus 
are you trying to make things more obscure? You know, we've talked about those kind of tactics in other episodes. And are you trying to directly manipulate them? Are you trying to bypass their defenses uh, with ch intentionally changing your terms to bypass their defenses? Now, I think you can also relate to this, um, especially, you know, being a pastor. Were there times when you said a term and it was just immediately the person gets set off? Yes. And you have to work through and you realize that, oh, okay, this person either has a bad definition or they have mm -hmm. some sort of baggage with the term or they just, it's a too complicated of a term for them. They just, and right. that's not an insult in their intelligence either. They just don't have familiarity with certain vocabulary. So you need to go, okay, I'm going to slow down here mm -hmm. and I'm going to unpack this with them and, you know, if that's too complicated of a term for them, or that term has some specific baggage that they just can't get around, I'm going to take care of this person, so I'm going to find a way to communicate the same thing. Right. So, uh, two, two examples of this, uh, in, in their quick examples. One is, growing up, my mom disliked tremendously big terms. Um she didn't like big terms. And of course, here I am, I'm in high school. I'm learning all of these big terms because I'm a nerd reading systematic theology in high school. Right. Uh, and, and I'm going and I'm telling her, you know, wow. Well, I mean, let me tell you about dispensationalism. And she would just shut down and say, like, she literally told me sometimes, I don't want to hear those big words. So I had to learn if I wanted to communicate the thing that I was excited about, I had to learn to explain it in a simple way, which was the same thing, but it wasn't in a sense to change her mind on something. It was in the sense of to communicate so that we could be talking about the same truth. It was about, um, again, it was about clarity and detail. You were forced right. to, instead of using the term, go, hey, this is what the term means. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then another example, and this one wasn't um, me, it, this was a, a meeting of three people and this wasn't me who had the problem, but the other two, it, it was funny because one of them I had met twice or three times, the other one I had met once or uh, actually I hadn't met him, that was the first time meeting him. And I thought that they were good friends because they could both kind of talk like they were good friends and knew each other. And pretty soon I realized they didn't know each other very well and they were just talking past each other the whole time. And both each of them were setting each other off, which this is a strategic planning meeting. So that was very, very problematic. But, but the issue was, and how we ended up solving the issue was basically I stepped in and I started interpreting and mm. it wasn't that we were finding uh, you know, I wasn't going in and switching terms in order to go and to find a fake middle ground where I'm really siding with one person or the other person, but I was able to be going and really saying, look, either you're, it seemed like one guy didn't like the tone of the other person and the other guy, uh, just didn't like some of the things the other guy was saying. And so kind of was able to explain, no, 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 no. I think this is what he's meaning by this. This is this what you're meaning? Yes. That's what I'm meaning. Oh, okay. See, we're all good here. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not what David French is talking about. <laughs> no, and he made that <laughs> he made that abundantly clear. Uh, and, and, you know, let's unpack that, because I think the vast majority of people listening could immediately see what he was saying, or at least the broad strokes of it. But I think it would be useful to dive into it a little bit in a little bit more detail because I think it's more, I think his whole speech was a little bit more insidious. Oh, I think than, it was very much so. Then it, it comes off initially, especially when you're listening, because he was talking relatively quickly. A lot was being said, and it was just kind of shot out there. And, I, you know, it just even in myself, getting a chance to pull a transcript of it and just read it in that slower sense of, you know, reading words, I can go through that at my own pace. I can look at each word and I can go, huh, there's a lot more going on here. Right. Right. Um, the, the, the first thing that I, that really kind of stuck out to me 
was he starts talking about the different contexts that you'll be talking to people in. And and by the way, for those who might be questioning whether or not David French is conservative or liberal, he literally comes up and he says, you know, if you're talking to all of these liberals, uh, this, you know, liberal group, and you use the phrase, I believe he said systemically racist well, or systemic said, racism. Uh, systemic racism. And, I guess you get the transcript. Uh, you can actually read it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, uh, um, it's systemic racism and systemic injustice. Right. Systemic racism and systemic injustice. He goes, and they will know exactly what you mean. He he is completely placing himself on the side uh, of the liberals. Like the, there yeah. is no ifs, ands, or buts about this. This is yeah. not him talking in, in such a way of just, oh, I'm making an example. No, he's identifying with that group. Yeah, and mm-hmm. if you read the or read for you guys who was listening and uh, we'll have a link to the the clip and, and it'll include uh, more than just what David French said. It'll include the uh, Michael Ware section as well. So you can listen to the whole answer. Uh, like I said, it doesn't really add much though. But it, it, I think we're going to probably try and do an article that has this transcript in it. Uh, but you can see through the whole thing. He presents, at every step, he presents liberal people positively, conservative people negatively, and not just somewhat negatively, but really negatively, both by implication and by direct statement. Now, there's there's two other fascinating things about that. He's willing to name people, not not specific names, I'm saying he's willing to name people that are left-leaning, aka people on the left, but... He's never says conservative. Right. Now, what's the context of the question, though? What's the the, the question that set this whole thing up? What was the context? Who are you supposed to be talking about? Conservatives. And was that directly named in the question? Or was that left ambiguous? I believe it was directly named, if I'm remembering right. But but it I can ask directly- the person who asked it to to, to verify here. Uh, well, I, we're getting reports. That the answer is yes. Yeah. But so it, it, it's directly, hey, this is the concept. How do we get conservatives to accept these ideas? And he just goes off. So even though he's trying to dance around and create some plausible deniability, well, I, I was just saying P- these people, I wasn't saying conservatives. I'm not saying that those. No, that's who he's talking about. He's talking about hey. the conservatives. These are these ignorant people. Uh, you, uh, and are, are you telling are the me that ones. the next New York Times article is going to be conservatives or Marxist too? Because I feel like that's uh, that's probably in David French's wheelhouse right there. Um, c- conservatives are Marxist too. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sorry. I can almost guarantee he's made that argument probably without even realizing, but that's a whole different topic yeah. for another video. Um, well, he, so he continues on though. And I, okay. These are the, these are the two ideas that really just keep coming out in my mind. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just one of those where I'm like, oh man, one is This whole the, the, what this podcast is about the changing of terms, right? He, he's he's changing what he's saying, and, and so he, he comes up and he gives the example of systemic racism, mm-hmm. and he says some people, I mean, they're just going to shut off, you know, not listen to a word you say. But if you say this, and it's you know so many years of slavery, which is amazing that he had these numbers just completely right off the top of his head. And uh, so many years of Jim Crow law and all of this. And then uh, and you're telling me that only da 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 years uh, afterwards and we're going to be, I think, 59 or whatever he said, that we're we're good after that, that, that it can change. First of all, he's being dishonest in his question in what he's trying to get the person to agree to. <laughs> because if you're trying to get them to agree to systemic racism 
that America is systemically racist, then you have to look at the system and the system is defined by the rules. We, we don't come out and say that the NBA or NFL is systemically racist because it predominantly has African Americans who are playing the game. We don't say that at the no, highest system, level. S- system, system is rigged. System is right. rigged. But if it came out and it said that a, a a white person only gets one point per basket and everybody else gets two points, then it would be systemically racist. Right? Because the, then the system is racist. Mm-hmm. But that's not the rules. No. So he's trying to make this argument. That now at first, you know, we want them to agree that it's systemically racist. Oh, uh, but if we use that term, they're not going to agree. But if we come out and we put it in, you know, but these things couldn't change in the short amount of time. But that's well, but not that's, the question. Exactly. That's not the question. But to him, it works. Why? Because he's, he's given into, well, he's trying to manipulate one. He's given into postmodernism. So truth is whatever he wants it to be. And he's giving into a woke framework of things. So right. systemic racism doesn't necessarily mean, you know, there can just as there can be racism without a racist, there can be a uh, systemic injustice without racist laws. Right. So <laughs> he, he's assuming that. And that's what's fascinating about beyond the fact that he made a caricature of history. And yeah. We, I mean, you look at the the numbers he gave, the dates, and you know all the things he's ignoring. A caricature to the degree that it's not a statement you could say is true. It, we have to cal- grapple with certain bad things in history, but you don't make a caricature of it. That helps right. no one, right? What, but he assumes th- all these things. Yeah. What, what do you think of this point too? And I think this is where we really see the intent uh, of why he's saying to change the terms. So this is where I, I think it becomes, you, you You definitely pick up on it before this point, but I think this is the point where I go, you can't argue the other way and be in reality. When he goes and he says, and if they don't agree with it, well, then we have to back up. He's going and trying the incremental tactic, which is a, by the way, I mean, this is, this is whether it's in politics, whether it's, um, you know, in theology, this is always Mm -hmm. the tactic of progressives, liberals, leftists, however you want to go into define that this group, it's, it's this simple idea of going and saying, well, if I can't get the whole thing, let's see what I can get. Yeah, it's that idea of, you know, hey guys, I'm a li- I'm a I'm said I'm a liberal too. I'm a conservative too because I agree with you on these points. And you build that common ground, and then you. Although I can't think of a point that David French really agrees with the sonnet at this point. But... Well, he doesn't. But that and he he emphasizes that through this, you have to fake common ground. You don't change what you mean, but you manipulate your terms and you manipulate the phrasings of things. To make it seem like on the surface level, particularly if someone's not paying attention, if they have their guard down because you've claimed you're a conservative, which is why they claim that, they want you to lower their your guard. You lower your guard, you fake that common ground, and then you get them immersed in the bad ideas that they you supposedly agree upon to the point where they've absorbed enough of the poison that they're now dying. Mm-hmm. They're now slipping into your uh, your your damnable ideologies. They're slipping into the death that is wokeness. And th- that's the tactic. That's right. the tactic. So it, it's not establishing, and that, that's it is good in argumentation to find a point where you guys agree upon. So you can establish understanding. What's the purpose of that, though? 
it's not faking the middle ground and it's not for the purpose of manipulation. It's for the purpose of communication. It's the same right. idea of if you were talking to someone who spoke a different language, if you're going to communicate with them, you have to find a way to communicate. You have to find something that you can agree upon. It's, you know, it's go to water and point at it and go water. And then they say, they look at that, they realize they go, Oh, you, when you say water, you mean agua. Right. You're establishing a point of mutual communication, not a trap. And again, right. you go through and listen to what David French is, is advocating. He's advocating trap people. Um, so w one of the things I, I want to point out I'll toss it back to you, but one of the things I want to point out is, you know, you mentioned, you talked about his whole uh, 345 year thing. And then if they agree with you, you then you're cooking. If they don't agree with you, then you got to back up. Um, one of the things is he says, uh, tune out. He says that they'll tune if they tune you out, if you use these certain terms. Mm -hmm. So you, that's why you should avoid the terms. Notice he didn't say something like uh, immediately disagree. It's tune out. It's painting his the people that disagree with him, conservatives, as unreasonable, not having valid uh reasons for rejecting woke ideas um this is a con contrast to you know before all this he, he painted liberals as people who are going to just agree with you it's it's it, painting this idea that that these are the dum-dums and this is why you need to do it for them because they're the dum-dums on the wrong side of history you, you know i think he's also painting uh simultaneously along with that picture i think he's painting something kind of interesting where he's he's bringing up the concept that to those who are listening now, um, that deep down everybody actually agrees with him, and that and it's an interesting concept because that's where I mean it's like the the well if if they don't go for that, then we have to back up. But you could tell he he was almost flabbergasted in his own mind that somebody wouldn't agree when he puts it into these different terms. Well, because he's and, making it dramatic. He's making it dramatic, emotional, and absurd. That you, how could you not agree with this? Right. And if the question is on systemic racism, the thing is, is that you could go and say, "Yes, look, I, I disagree with, uh, with 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 crow laws. Look, I disagree with um, with, with chattel slavery." Uh, and and you could go and say, "But we don't have either of those today." So therefore, it's no longer systemic. You don't have mm -hmm. a claim for systemic. Yep. It, it, <laughs> and he's he's saying that that is an invalid position logically. Mm -hmm. it is what it, that's what he's indicating in, in this. I don't go into an argument ever thinking that somebody can't disagree with me. I might go into an argument thinking that I'm going to be able to convince the other person, but I never go into it thinking that somebody couldn't have consistently wrong logic or even mm -hmm. the fact that maybe I'm wrong on something. I mean, that's always a possibility too, but, but it's one of those things where like I go into this and I'm going, somebody can be, cons can be consistent in their logic and just wrong on their premise. And that will bring them to a wrong conclusion. He can't e even agree with that. It's the idea of going, uh, no, I, uh, that can't happen. That, that's the well, attitude that he has. Well, and that's one of the reasons that, you know, the idea of wokeness, it's so dangerous because it's not just a analytical tool that you can apply to something. It's a worldview. Right. And I do have mercy on these guys for the fact that what else are they going to believe? They've given into the worldview. So obviously they're going to act consistently with it. Exactly what you were just saying. I have no expectation that they're going to agree with me. 
In fact, I have the opposite. I have the expectation they're not going to agree with me. So I'm already prepared to have to communicate. Right. David French is taking the exact opposite approach. And that's, I find this bizarrely fascinating because, again, he's painting anyone that disagrees with him as awful people. Anyone that's a conservative is this, you know, again, this this dumb dumb that's on the wrong side of history type stuff. Uh, but then he says I, the the line about, uh, you know, one of the things, parts of our online discourse, uh, which is if you're not my 100% uh, friend, if you're only my 80% friend, uh, then you're turned into my 100% enemy. And I don't get why he would say that. Because he's he's doing doing that exact thing and advocating that other people do that. He's advocating, right. he's declaring war, if you really think about it. He's saying, hey, us, we're the enlightened, woke liberals here. Well, And it's, again, funny, I find he takes the mask off during this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, he knows where who he's talking to. He assumes that they're all a bunch of liberals. He assumes that they're all woke, and he goes... I'm one of you guys. This is how we're going to get the conservatives to our position. Right. And, and I mean, just to, to further your point on this, if you, you, if you look at the illustration that he gives, if, if you go and you agree that chattel slavery, slavery is wrong, that uh, crow law is wrong, mm -hmm. but you disagree that we live in systemic racism today, he says, you have to go back. You have to back up. You have to back up. Literally, if you go with a year breakdown that he gave, um, it's actually right about 80% that you'd be agreeing with with 350 years and only disagreeing with him on 50 some years. That's, that's basically 80%. If I'm doing my math right. That's kind of funny. It's kind of funny when you think about it that way, but th th that's kind of the point is he, he, he's admitting there's a fundamental difference between his position and your position that if you can't, right. that if now we we're on the verge of getting distracted by his argumentation, his specific yeah. argumentation, because it's so problematic, but, uh, <laughs> I find that, again, I find this a little bit hard to grasp and fascinating at the same time that he'd make the whole episode for us. He'd be so open, you know, no, no issues about, yeah, this is just the way I think, guys. And this is how you should act, too. Right. Um, but it, it's you one of the reasons that, that we do Wikipedia is... Now, people people criticizing people like David French will get upset with anyone that's criticizing up, not just us, and go, yeah, but he's he's not saying these things. He's saying these other things. Yes. But what What is he saying in this clip? He's saying, that's my tactic, guys. This is how I get conservatives to... Uh, now, I find it fascinating that nowhere in the conversation did he say, did he object to any part? Of, neither neither speaker objected in any part of the question. Right. They didn't object to the the idea that we need to get conservatives over the boogeyman of Marxism. Now, that doesn't mean that right. they're saying they could interpret it, that in a way where they're just seeing Marxist, Marxism as a ghost. It doesn't exist. But it's still fascinating. They wouldn't clarify. They wouldn't be like, hey... This isn't Marxism, guys. It's fascinating that they wouldn't say that. But it's also fascinating that they have no qualms. No qualms with social justice. Right. And so he's, his, his whole context of this is, guys, I'm woke and I'm on the left. This is what you need to be doing to get people to move. Right. Yet when we talk about, hey, David French is a woke guy and he's not a conservative, people will... What are you doing? Of course he is. He said this thing. This is the tactic. This is why that it, that tactic works. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. it, 
and, and you know the the thing that I think is interesting on on this is that you also see this in your everyday life. It's not just that David mm-hmm. French does this. It's that you're going to be seeing this in your everyday life because French goes and he tells people, use this tactic. Um, but French isn't the author of this tactic. I don't know who the author of the tactic is, but it's been used by many people and many people before. In fact, Satan? if you go to your, uh, yeah, Satan, uh, did God really say, you know, um, this it, one of the, the the big things is if if you were to go to your HR department and have to do a diversity inclusion and uh, equity training, I believe that's uh, the, the the acronym. Um, you're going to face this. Now they are going to eventually get to the terms that you don't like, but they're almost always mm-hmm. going to be starting off with the fact of, well, let me tell you the story about oh the three hundred and some years of uh, of slavery and Jim Crow law and uh, going into to all of that, and then oh, and this is systemic injustice. This is yeah. systemic racism. It and it's that concept of it's being brought to you in an incremental thing, bringing you along, and then bringing you to a conclusion where they do point out perhaps something bad that happened. But then they go and they change something bad that happened to something that equating it to something that's bad happening right now and that it's part of the system. And so therefore we have to change the system. That's one of the big things with woke. That's how they're manipulating you. It's a changing and a shifting of terms. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that so something that that might a good, good parallel that I think people can grasp onto in what you were saying there. The idea of start with the common ground that isn't actually common ground, get them bought in, and then slowly introduce the the woke ideas. It's the exact same thing that cults do, and specifically mm-hmm. Mormonism. If you have a Mormon come to your door, and I know many of you will have had that experience, they will talk about Jesus They will talk about the gospel. They will talk about salvation. They will talk about God. They will use all these terms— Beyond that, they will say that when they will say, hey, you're a Christian. We're a Christian, too. We believe in these same same things. When you say God, we are talking about the same God. Look at us. Oh, we believe in the gospel, too. Yay. We're all happy family. Do you want to pray to God to God with us? And every time I have them do that, I'm like. But who do you mean when you say God? Right. Who do you mean? And there are, it's it's fascinating because they have their scripts and they follow them. It's fascinating that I'll challenge them on that. What do you mean by this term? What do you mean by this term? What do you mean? Who do you who do you say God is? And I'll get them to go through, and they'll even admit that yeah, you're saying that God is fundamentally different than who we say God is, right? And then right after that, they'll go, and then I'll say, okay. So what you're saying is we believe in two different gods. No, we believe in the same God. Right. It, but I do think that you bring up a really good defense um, against this tactic, and that is make people define their term. Yep. Make people they define don't want you to do that. They don't term. want to do that for you. Because how, how would you, like if, if you're actually sitting down and David French does this and all of a sudden here you're finding common ground with David French and and he's so exciting and then you find out that oh you can't go that far with David French so he backs up and he keeps doing this and and you'll frustrate them you'll frustrate them when you don't concede you'll frustrate them and then eventually as they get frustrated they'll actually default back to their original term that mm-hmm. that's what they that's what they will do and then when they say that you say well what what do you mean by systemic what do you mean by systemic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and make them define that, and then point out, well, that fits here, but it doesn't fit there. It yep. fits there, but it doesn't fit here. And that's, oh my goodness, that's that is the most powerful weapon you have. Is what do you mean? I believe we might have even mentioned this in other episodes as well, but that that really is getting people to define their terms is the biggest thing that will destroy them. Now, here's the thing. Don't trust them either. Don't just trust them. Look at how they use the term because sometimes they'll define it in a way and you go like, 
yeah, but that's not that's not how you're using it. So what do you actually mean? Be willing to chase them down. Mm-hmm. Be willing to chase them down on it. Don't let them again. French will tell you he's a conservative. But yeah. look at this. He was very open. That he's not. That he's not. No, he didn't say those specific words. He didn't say, I am a liberal. But he made it very clear in this. So he's willing right. to lie. He's willing to define his terms incorrectly. Right. And in the other thing that I would say that would be extremely helpful is think through the issues. Think through the issues, come to an opinion on the issues, because it's much harder to change somebody who has an opinion on the issues. And so when they start to try to incrementally move you, you're not going to be manipulated by perceived common Mm -hmm. ground because you know what ground you're on. One of the reasons people often easily get manipulated is because they don't know the ground that they're actually standing Mm -hmm. on. They they just don't know the lay of the land. And so it's important to take some time and to just think through these issues that that are big, whether it's... uh, racism, whether it's life, whether it's all this. I mean, French comes out and says he's a conservative. And then at the same time, he's very upset that Roe versus Wade gets overturned. At the same time, he's very upset by the idea of uh, banning abortion. Um, He's very upset by um, going and saying that we should just have biblical traditional marriage. Well, why is he able to say he's a conservative or why is he claiming he's conservative? He's trying to find perceived common ground. Mm-hmm. That's his whole shtick here. Yep. Anything else we need to hit on? Well, let's wrap it up with just a little bit more on kind of how you can defeat this tactic or how you can recognize yeah. it. Um, yeah. Again, we've talked about the the ask questions. We talked about know your position. Uh, talked about just standing your ground. Don't let them bully you around. Um. If you hear something that's questionable, again, push back on that. Try and come to an understanding. Don't just assume it's wrong because you might be reading something into it that's not actually there. Again, that's why you need to have them define their terms. But it's good. It's good when, especially when someone's bringing a caricature. Right. Because what David French you talked about the the if someone ever comes to you and says something like to what David French said about the 345 years of uh, slavery and Jim Crow, we'll ignore the fact that Jim Crow didn't start the second that the 14th Amendment was passed. Um, you know, if they, they come with that ridiculous caricature of things and then say, agree with me, agree with me. You should go, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a caricature of history. I need to know what you actually are saying. Be willing to do that. But the other thing is go into it with suspended judgment. Be willing to be skeptical. Skeptical does not mean that you don't believe them. Skeptical just means that you're withholding judgment. You're withholding judgment. You're saying, hey, what you're saying doesn't completely make sense to me. There's a flavor to it that I don't understand. I'm going to ask you questions. You're not giving me the answers which is a problem in itself. So I'm going to go talk to someone who knows more about this. I'm not just going to say you're wrong. I'm not going to say you're right. I'm going to go talk to someone else. I'm going to go have a discussion with them and see if I can't figure out what's actually going on. And you might find out that, hey, I was just overreacting. You might find out, hey, that's that's true. What they were saying was problematic. I just didn't have all the information to put terms to it. And that's one mm-hmm. of the reasons that we exist here at Wikipedia is we want you to help be able to identify it. That's why we're doing the How the Woke Manipulate series. We want you to be able to identify it. And if you need help identifying things, contact us. Contact Wikipedia at gmail.com. If you have questions about this episode, comment on the episode on you know Facebook, Rumble, uh, Again, I, I'm still not 100% sure about it, but apparently you can message people on some of the uh, podcast platforms. I don't know where those go. I hope we're not missing messages. If for some reason we don't respond to you in something, email us. Again, contact Wikipedia at gmail.com. We want to make sure that this content is helpful and useful to you. That's right. 
what one other thing I would just kind of point out is this also means that your discernment needs to be further than buzzword level. There are a lot of people mm. who I would mm-hmm. say have have buzzword uh, discernment, and the thing is, is that they only look for certain repeated words, um, and because they're not willing to ask what does that mean, they uh, and, and they haven't suspended their judgment um, until the person's hand is revealed as, as Kyle was going and saying, a lot of times they go and, and, and this can happen on both sides. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's that they're coming to a conclusion that somebody believes something that they don't, and they're putting a negative connotation on them, uh, or they're giving them common ground because they're, they're only listening for buzzwords. They go, well, I didn't hear the buzzwords. And I mean, I guess I agree with, with this point, this point, this point. So why wouldn't I agree at the last point? And mm-hmm. then come to find out, you know, two years in to the call that, Hey, actually you sh- you should have just had a better discernment than buzzwords. Yeah. Um, and that's important to understand because what David French is doing is he's giving a pushback tactic right now of how do we convince people after they've already made a list of words that, oh no, if somebody uses these words, it must be bad. How do we combat that? And he's telling us how they combat that is change what you're saying, but don't change Mm -hmm. what you're meaning. Yep. Yep, it's and it's why some people think that wokeness is dying is because mm-hmm. they caught on to the words should not it's why they, they woke was a self applied term by woke people. Right. And it's why there's there now there's so much resistance to the term is because the meaning of it is more popularly understood now. Right. So they can't use that. So they start coming up with other terms. Right. It- in their their goal, they don't care if you use their terms. They care if you believe their ideas. They're yes. not out here to make a slogan. They're, that's not what their goal is. Their goal is to change people's minds. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, you have to break down their arguments, what they're saying, and you have to realize where they're trying to move you in the discussion. Oh, yeah. But I think that's about what we got time for today. So... When we look at this, remember the woke manipulate by shifting terms. So pay attention to the terms, ask questions, know what you believe, come into things skeptical, withholding judgment, and really ask them questions. That's one of the biggest things Mm -hmm. that we can say. Remember, David French is woke. I mean, makes sense with his last name. Uh, But anyway, keep standing for the truth. And remember, don't go woke.